160 pilot whales stranded on a remote beach. Locals in Western Australia's southwest were the first responders here at Toby Inlet. You're seeing all these beautiful animals stranded like this, it's just, it's, it is hard. By the afternoon, they'd managed to push most of the whales back out to sea. But with 28 dead whales on the beach, there's still a lot of work to do. We're still counting those two, so sometimes you'll need to feel them. Many of the volunteers have travelled from across the region. We've got one, two, three, four, five. They've come to help gather basic information, such as their number of teeth and whether they're male or female. Pull it out, Mum. Like this mother and daughter duo. We've both always just been really interested in animals and just, yeah. Help the environment, that's all I want to do. The mass stranding has attracted more than just willing volunteers and curious crowds. Marine scientists have also flocked to the scene. This large one in the middle is actually a male. Most of them, however, are females, and that's interesting in itself of why are the females stranded here today. Dr Kate Spruggis is part of a recently formed network of international researchers trying to understand why this happens. We come to these stranding events to try and collect more information, to try and piece the puzzle together of why they strand. We have so many people that are interested in this question. Mass whale strandings have perplexed scientists across the globe for decades. The whale's beach is first light today. There are theories as to why the phenomenon occurs, but no definitive answers. Just last year, another pod of almost 100 pilot whales was stranded at Chains Beach in WA South. Scientists think the way the pod huddled together is a significant clue. The huddling behaviour may be some sort of disorientation, it could be distress. There most likely would be a lot of communication going on, getting that idea of just how connected they are and seeing them in this huddling behaviour, which I had personally never seen before, is a unique insight. Dr Vanessa Perotta says one of several theories is that strandings could be caused by disruptions to the whale's navigation system. We know pilot whales use biological sonar, which is also known as echolocation. This is seeing the world and navigating through sound. We have ships, we have underwater construction, there's navy, there's sonar, there's seismic work. There is a number of different things that make the ocean really loud. The next morning, Dr Spruggis is heading to the local tip. We're going to do some necropsies, which are basically animal autopsies uh, on the pilot whale. One of the things that we'll be looking at is even just, is there food in their stomachs? Have they been eating lately? It's good to have the animals on the right side with the left side facing up. By now, the dead whales are rotting and the scientists are losing precious time and data. And one of the theories is that they are being piloted into the shore by a sick animal. And so we are going to see if they are sick internally, if they do have potential diseases or parasites or something that could have caused this stranding. But it could also be external factors, so environmental factors such as sea surface temperature, El Nino or La Nina, uh, if the distribution of the prey might have been affected, they might not have been feeding. All right. Back on the coast, another operation is underway. About 20 kilometres from the first stranding. 
They're out there right now assessing the condition of a baby pilot whale which has been floating back in towards the shore and they'll have to make a decision about whether or not they can actually save it. Fortunately though it is just the one and there isn't an entire pod floating back in. It's an anxious wait. The vets have decided to bring the calf to shore to monitor its vitals. They've made the difficult call to euthanize the calf. The animal uh, certainly wasn't moving the way we would expect to see whales move. Um, very small, very young, um, and we would suggest potentially and most likely orphaned um, as a result of the, the major stranding yesterday. I would say that there's very much a human connection as well when we, as scientists, talk about the behaviour of pilot whales because they are very tight-knit social beings, that these animals are very reflective of our own lives in, in a way. Scientists are now analysing the results from the whale autopsies. We don't know why they happen. If I could predict when and where they're going to happen, that would be an amazing insight. There is a sense of hope among the researchers on the ground. With all this information, our hope is that one day we can answer the question of why do pilot whales mass strand? I think we will get closer. It will be a complex answer.